I want to start showing you this picture, which was taken many years ago in Japan, because the event that led to this tragedy was an eye opener. Here's a mother bathing her mentally retarded son. And you can see that son is very, very sick. He was poisoned by mercury, by methyl mercury, from the mother's diet during pregnancy. So the mother was unscathed. She escaped from the poisoning, but the methyl mercury made it through to her fetus during her pregnancy and destroyed that nervous system forever. It was an eye-opener for us because it illustrated that chemical brain drain is a reality. The big question is, how large a problem do we have in front of us here? And that's what I'm going to try to determine. Now, we have done much research in this field, but we have made some erroneous assumptions. And those erroneous assumptions have negatively influenced on our capability of reaching the right conclusions. First of all, we thought that when a woman is pregnant, the child is in the uterus, the fetus is protected by that armor that the mother has wrapped around this developing child. Wrong. We thought the children are just little adults because basically, I mean, they have the same organ systems, the same, uh, in a different scale, the same anatomy. Wrong. There are definite changes in the physiology. We also thought that um, any poisoning that might occur would be uh, reversible uh, if it happens just like infections and other childhood diseases, not so. And we thought that industrial chemicals are so useful to us that we need proof before we limit their uses. And unfortunately, the kinds of tests that can be carried out to assess the toxicity of industrial chemicals, they are too expensive. So this is like a double whammy that um, if we really want the proof, but we can't afford uh, to look for it. And for all of these reasons, we have ended up being uh, in serious uh, error in regard to the impact of chemical brain drain. So we have a big problem in our hands. And the question is, what should we do? I have some suggestions for what I think are the prudent conclusions, uh, at least some that we need to consider to counterbalance the erroneous assumptions that I began uh, talking about uh, a few minutes ago. So, so number one, we get only one chance to develop a brain <laughs> and the development has to go through multiple stages and it's so complex that just a little bit going wrong can have severe and permanent uh, effects. The brain is, is very vulnerable and uh, it is not forgiving in regard to the effects of even small damages. We depend on the full integrity of the brain for optimal functioning. Therefore, we need to protect every bit of it. We need all the brain cells that uh, we can have. And it's not just a matter of looking for neurological diagnosis. This is a matter of functioning. 
It's a matter of our own functioning, but in particular, it's a matter of the next generation's brain functions. Uh, so it's a matter of intelligence uh, for the future. So for all of these reasons, I would say brains need protection. We need to be more precautionary in the way we deal with chemical agents in society. The next generation deserves it. Thank you. Mm -hmm.